In an inclusive or diverse classroom, educators in general are given the challenge to create a task or assessment that will cater to the students' needs, strengths, and interests. Along with the challenges that they encounter in the academy, the intricacies of creating or designing a performance-based task is also placed in their responsibility. Now, join us, the BESED 3A English, to disclose and discuss the insights that you need to know about designing a performance-based task. In designing a performance task, the very first thing that we need to do is to focus on the learning outcomes that require complex cognitive skills and student performances. This notion suggests that tasks are needed to be developed or selected in light of the important learning outcomes. We all know for a fact that in creating a lesson plan, we must first identify the learning outcomes or the learning goals that the students need to develop in every topic or in every lesson. Therefore, the performance task must be dependent or connected to the target learning outcomes, which must be heavily focused in crafting complex cognitive skills and efficient student performances. However, performance-based tasks are naturally time-consuming. But let us all take note that shortcuts are not much entertained in this aspect, just because it's easier. Therefore, educators must design a performance task that caters all the learning goals, yet it is still feasible, despite of the time limits. So uh, the second one is to select or develop tasks that represent both the contents and the skills that are central to important learning outcomes. So uh, it is important to specify the range of uh, contents and resources that students can use uh, in performing tasks. So in any uh, event, the specification of content understandings is critical in ensuring the task functions uh, as intended. Uh, tasks should not be tasks alone. The resources used to accomplish the set of tasks should have a wide area to choose from. And the more specified the content is, uh, the more guarantee that uh, given that there is understanding and that a task functions the way it's supposed to function. The uh, strategies you use to assess a student's skills, competencies, and uh, point of view reflect your judgment as a practicing professional. So uh, you are the most qualified to know what the expectations are for your profession. So uh, whether you rely on accreditation standards or some other guidelines for your profession, you know that uh, criteria is very important. So uh, these criteria will uh, guide you in selecting the best uh, assessment strategies. So once you have uh, determined the specific criteria, for uh, the skills, competencies, and points of view, you will consider uh, which uh, assessment strategies provide the best picture for your, uh, of your students' uh, attainment of them uh, within your community of practice. For example, in uh, teacher education, you want to make sure that your students can plan and uh, teach age-appropriate lessons, manage basic classrooms on a daily basis, and relate to both uh, children and adults. Engineering students must also go beyond their mathematical calculations to uh, design workable solutions and products. Aspiring uh, musicians uh, must also master uh, music theory, but they must also be able to create and perform new works. Philosophers uh, must also know Aristotle, but at the same time, they must also exhibit the thought of uh, the habits of thought of discipline and uh, must be able to create their own personal philosophies. So ultimately, engaging and assessing students in their performance of authentic tasks within specific communities of practice helps them uh, construct their identities in relation to these communities and supports their professional growth. Priority and goal setting is what this third pointer is trying to tell us. This simply means that learning outcomes or targets should be given focus. As an example, in the case of teaching English, if we rely on a certain macro skill, let's say reading for example, other irrelevant macro skills or competencies should not be included. Relevantly, performance-based tasks 
that are directed on reading comprehension or reading fluency should be the target of the task itself. Basically, this third pointer is trying to tell us that priority setting is an integral part in designing a performance-based task. We, as future educators, should be very particular with the learning targets or outcomes that we want to provide our students with. Number four, provide necessary scaffoldings for students to be able to do the tasks and what is expected. Tasks often involve ambiguities and require students to experiment, gather information, or formulate. However, students need to have prior knowledge and skills in order to address the problem. For example, in a literature class, you can tell your students to read five chapters of Hamlet, write an article about it, and submit it the next day. That is a big no-no. Having no safety nets or parachute is incorrect. Now, there are different types of scaffolding that can help your students to learn. One example of this is a show-and-tell. A show-and-tell would be effective for visual learners. Showing your students what to do or how to do it would be effective. Or you could use visual aids. Next, tapping into prior knowledge. Tapping into prior knowledge could be in the means of offering hints, hunches, or suggestions. Or a teacher could also make students relate their topics into real-life experiences. Next is construct task direction so that the student's task is clearly indicated. If the instructions or directions are not clear, it can lead to the wide array of performances of students that it becomes impossible to read them. By design, performance task base gives students a substantial degree of freedom to explore and approach problems in different ways and come up with a novel solution. Performance tasks are intended to assess students' performance, so see to it that there must be a clear instruction so that the task will be done accurately. The question now here is, how should teachers give the clear instructions? There are eight steps that can help students to complete the task with ease. First, use clear and precise language. It is advised to use short, complete sentences and precise terms so that the students will be able to understand what is expected to them. Second, repeat your directions. Some repetition and redirection can ensure that the students understand what to do. You can also demonstrate the task for fast comprehension. Third, explain the purpose of the task. Connect it to the students' existing knowledge in previous lessons so that the students will feel more confident about tackling the task. Fourth, make sure your students understand. After giving task directions, ask the students to repeat or rephrase what is expected to them. You can also ask questions regarding the requirements and of course, clarify any confusing points. Fifth, use an appropriate tone. Like what we always said, it is not entirely about what we say, but how we say it. Don't yell and mumble. Don't speak too fast. And of course, pause frequently so that the students will be given time to digest the information. Sixth, describe the specifics. If the assignment requires a particular format and a specific materials to be used, then let the students know. Seventh, Provide examples. It is important to provide examples so that the students would know what is your expectation about their performance. Eighth and last, break the task into manageable chunks. It is most important to the teachers who teach younger students who can handle a long list of directions. Now that we know how to construct task directions, let us proceed in specifying criteria to be used in rating performance. The last pointer is for constructing performance tasks is clearly communicate performance expectations in terms of the criteria by which the performances will be judged. Specifying the criteria to be used in rating the performance helps clarify task expectations for the students. Leads to clear understanding of the students on how they would perform their tasks knowing what is being emphasized and what is expected from them 
through that given criteria. In this way, the criteria serves as the guidance of the students on what they should be focusing with and how they should showcase these ideas based on the expected outcomes that the criteria has elaborated. Or in short, the criteria leads the students to proper directions. Because of this, students can gauge progress and learn what needs to be done or added or what needs to be diminished. Assessment criteria are descriptive statements that provide learners and instructors with information about the qualities, characteristics, and aspect of a given learning task. Assessment criteria make it clear to the learners what they are expected to do to demonstrate achievement of the learning outcomes and factors. Instructors will consider it when making judgment about their performance. Sharing assessment criteria with students at the beginning of the course is an effective way to help students build confidence in learning and improving their performance. Making assessment criteria explicit help helps them recognize what is important and valued in the curriculum. Focus their efforts on the key learning outcomes and evaluate their own performance through self-assessment and reflection. Based on the picture, the effectiveness of an assessment can be classified into two, the weaker and stronger assessment. Prior to this, there are four criteria to determine an effective assessment. Number one is the alignment. How aligned is the assessment task to the graduation proficiencies and performance indicators? Number two, accessibility. How accessible is the assessment task to all students? Number three, rigor. How challenging is the task? Does it require students to think critically at the level defined by the indicators assigned? Is the task a learning stretch? And number four is the scoring. Are the success criteria clearly defined? If the assessment includes group product, how is individual proficiency determined? Now let's discuss the three elements of an effective performance task. According to McTighe, a good assessment task should have features such as having clear targets, uh, focus of purpose, some uh, proper methodologies and procedures, sound sampling, and assessment that is free of bias and distortion. Primarily, it is vital for teachers to provide clear descriptions of specific achievement expectations uh, to be assessed and uh, measure one or more of the four achievement expectations and assure that they understand and uh, they are remain aware of what they are trying to assess. So uh, also they have the obligation to clarify the intended uses of these assessment results and specify whose information uses the uh, assessment results, whether the teachers or uh, curriculum um, developers and uh, also policy policymakers. An assessment method that is suited to the assessment goals should also be applied depending on the set goals. These may be done through essays, direct communication, selected response, and extended investigation. They should also be able to provide a representative sample and produce results of maximum quality and minimum cost of time and effort. So uh, lastly, uh, the any performance assessment task should be transparent by presenting uh, Sources of, sources of inference and error that may have affected the development of the implementation of the assessment. Overall, these are the key factors for teachers or any aspiring educators in identifying the strengths and weaknesses of learners and measuring their academic performance and behavior through a systematized flow of assessment procedures. Now, in the succeeding section, uh, we will narrow it down to uh, three elements. Now I present to you uh, Mr. Jehu Gupit to present the first element of an effective performance task. The three elements of an effective performance assessment task include meaningful context. It was said that good performance assessments are more contextualized. Why? Because it helps create understanding of language or concepts by using materials such as actual objects, pictures, gestures, 
or language. In contextualized assessment, it focuses on the student's construction of functioning knowledge and the student's performance in application of knowledge in the real-work context of the discipline area. Assessment tasks reflect the goal of learning. It uses performance-based tasks which are authentic in nature. In addition, it describes assessments, practices which measures skills and knowledge in dealing with specific situations or perform specific tasks which the students have identified as important and meaningful to them. Application of the skills and knowledge must be in the context of the real world as possible. The second element is a thinking process. According to McTighe, we must know how to ask the students to actually use these bodies of knowledge and apply it to a new situation. All of the ideas, concepts, and skills that are acquired during the learning process will only be viewed as essentially significant if they can put all of these into meaningful work. So uh, he says that if you really understand something, you can work with it, analyze it, argue against it, and present it. Uh, there must be an active collaboration between the uh, students and their mental capacities or capabilities. Educators, educators should ask of their assessments, could students accomplish this task and still understand what we are trying to assess? But how do we design effective performance tasks aligned with the constructs of thinking processes, which includes critical thinking and problem solving? In designing performance tasks, we must always begin with the cognitive skill that we want to assess. Every decision about how to design performance tasks grows from that clear understanding of the target. Because the focus is on a specific cognitive skill, we want to remove barriers from both the understanding of the contents and the skills. Thus, we choose uh, tasks that are situated in contexts in which students are already familiar with. However, we strive to design tasks that are problematic to students. Or in other words, students should not have a quick solution to these uh, tasks. So uh, this can be done through a couple of ways. First, uh, we make tasks problematic by providing open-ended assignments where students can find multiple solutions for these problems. Second, we make these uh, tasks problematic by, uh, I mean, through the complexity of a problem. So when a problem is complex, students need to really think it through for them to answer it. From an initial understanding of the targeted cognitive skill and the context in which we want to situate the task, we refine the task by asking targeted questions that elicit student thinking. Now, how do we evaluate a student's critical thinking and problem-solving skills through a performance task? When students complete their performance tasks, they generate evidence of their thinking that we can uh, utilize to evaluate their mental processes. So uh, when utilizing a rubric, we uh, evaluate the students' responses across the task on each construct. Students are scored on each component of the rubric, and this allows us to give a refined feedback for them. Uh, these areas of discrepancies that we will find out will become places for us to look deeper into the works of these uh, students, especially in their performance tasks, and make an argument for us to provide an appropriate score for them. Now let's move on to Ms. Tara to discuss the last element of an effective performance task. And lastly, we must have the appropriate product or performance. We must avoid products or performances that don't relate to the content of what is being assessed. Even though they may seem like good activities on their own, still, we have to avoid it. Due to the fact that sometimes, students get so caught up in the product that they lose sight of what they're actually intending to show with the help of the product. One common problem is an overemphasis on the aesthetic elements of an assessment task. Remember to maintain the relevance of the product to the actual content of the assessment. Sometimes, setting up a good set of rubrics and criteria can help students limit and focus on certain things that matter, like content and effectivity. Designing a performance-based task is an intricate process. 
The task should not just be an evaluative measure. It should be advocated in learning outcomes and must be made with quality. Let us be guided by the questions on this checklist. Number 1. Are essential content and skills targets integrated? When assessments are being employed, it is good to note that the essential skills and competencies should be targeted and applied as well. After all, if we talk about learning outcomes, the purpose of assessing students should be founded in comprehension of content and mastery of skills. Number 2. Are multiple targets included? How many learning outcomes are being aimed for? For an instance, in the case of an audiovisual presentation, there will be two macro skills involved listening and viewing. In this case, the teacher should specify the targets or the learning outcome so that students are guided all throughout. Third, is the task authentic? Although adaptation can also be practiced, if there is an attribute that is very salient in designing tasks, authenticity should be marked or noted. The task, along with the clear instructions, targets, and learning outcomes, there should be authenticity. The more authentic the task is, the more guided the students are and the more they are engaged in a clearly settled discussion. Fourth in the checklist is, is the task teachable? Teachers must assess the task first before they administer it to the students. Consider the level and capacity of the learners. The task must be proportionate to these criteria because if the task isn't teachable, then students would be uninterested and most probably they won't perform the task. Do not give complex tasks to beginners. Beginners must start with the basics first, then increase the intensity of performance from time to time. Little by little, add some extra challenges until they can perform a complex task on their own. Fifth, is the task feasible? When giving a task, teachers must ask, Is it possible to do easily or conveniently? It is to ensure that everyone can perform the task with ease and make an alternative solution if it isn't visible to the majority. Sixth, are multiple solutions and paths possible? Regarding student learning skills, the use of multiple solution methods for problem solving is considered to develop student creativity and mental flexibility. Students must be thought that a task can be made in multiple ways and strategies as long as it, had, it adheres to the criteria of the performance task. Is the nature of task clear? Giving clear instructions to students can affect student success in the classroom. When given effective directions, students can engage with material more effectively and have more productive experiences. It is important to use clear and precise language, repeat directions, explaining purpose of tasks, making sure students understand, using appropriate tones, describing the specifics, providing examples, and breaking tasks into smaller chapters. Is the task challenging and stimulating? A task must be stimulating and challenging to encourage students to create new ideas. Task could either be word game, puzzle, strategy games, or activities that uses the head. Next on the checklist for writing performance task is our criteria for scoring included. Yes, criteria for scoring must be included in writing performance tasks so that the students must be aware on how their performances will be judged or gra graded. Criteria for scoring also guides the students on what are the essential things that they, are, they needed to add to their performances in order to achieve the expectations that were given to them. And last on the checklist will be, are constraints for completing tasks included? Constraints or limits in completing tasks are essential in order to get specific ideas out of the wide scope of topics. This enables the students to know what are the essentials and what are not to the tasks that they are given with. This also gives the students the ideas of the range, scope, and the limitations of the tasks that they had been in charge with.